Drink Masters! Drink Masters on Netflix. You guys seem to love when I reacted to Drink Masters as an alternative judge. So because of that, I thought we would continue reacting to some of the episodes. And I would continue being a judge because it's the only way I can continue to be drunk on a Tuesday afternoon without being concerned. Is it alcoholism or is it just your job? I'm sure Lindsay Lohan asks herself that every day. Speaking of, hold on. What am I doing here? Shut up. We're on the clock. Just stand here. Just stand here and be a guest. Stand here and be a guest for this so I can put featuring Lindsay Lohan in the title. Don't forget to let me know what you think about my judging capabilities in the comments below. And like this video and subscribe for future ones. I put them out every Tuesday and Thursday, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. But let's get into reacting to episode two of Drink Masters. Lindsay, are you ready? Great. Mixologist, I welcome you back with open arms and empty glass and this sexy ass display of fruit. I see gooseberries, I see mangoes, I see figs, and I'm feeling okay, like I kind of like where this is going. What's a gooseberry? I don't know what a <laughs> I don't know what a gooseberry is. Mangoes and limes? Yeah, bitch. Everyone's gonna yell at me in the comments because they don't know what a gooseberry is. Stop! Uh. I'm just an alcohol enthusiast. I don't know shit about gooseberries. I don't know about fruit. I'm not a cosmetologist. It smells so bad. It stinks. It smells like durian, which is real nasty. Is it just like a stinky fruit? It's just a stinky fruit. I mean, I rarely shower and my hygiene is shit. So technically, am I a stinky fruit? <laughs> we want you to create a full sensory cocktail experience using the fruit you choose that takes us to a time and place meaningful to you. I really, really want those gooseberries really bad. So they have to pick a fruit and make a great cocktail that also transports the judges to a certain experience of a certain place? Ugh. I would just give them a pitcher of tequila and say, this transports you straight to the ER. I work for a cider company. The apples were just calling my name. If there's anything we've learned from fall cocktails is, is that the opportunities to make apple cider cocktails is endless. I'm sorry, I'm drunk. We're gonna be slurring our words this entire time, like this bitch in an interview. So I knew everyone was gonna go for something safe. I'm going for mangoes. I'm here to take risks and do it big. Lloyd, come on down, baby. <laughs> oh. I'm doing it. I'm doing He's going for the Duran, the stinky. I gotta not let you guys know that I have that when I film. He's going for the stinky fruit. So what are you gonna make, like a stinky cocktail? Like I get you're trying to like show them that you could deal with whatever you're given, but that's gonna put you at a disadvantage. Why would you willingly put yourself at a disadvantage. That's like mistake number one on reality TV. Don't give yourself any hurdles that you don't need because any slight mistakes you make will be amplified by editing. That's a ballsy ass move. Dude, you have some Dorian balls. Suzu. First of all, stinky balls, I like. Honestly, I'd make that cocktail. I'd make a cocktail called musky balls because even though it stinks, we like it. The straight people might not know what I'm talking about, but for anybody who likes the smell of musk, like when you're going down on a guy and you smell the side of the dick and it's just like, mu am I, is that, should I not be talking about this during a video? Capri, come on down. <sighs> All right. We got Korean melon and the tamarind pods. I'm going with the Korean melon. I, I don't know what half of these things are. I know a lot of you want me to make cocktails like these people are doing, but I'm just a traditional bartender. I think my lack of world experience to know what any of these are would prevent me from making anything balanced or good. I wouldn't be able to make anything enjoyable if I don't know the flavors that each of these things have. When I traveled in India, I consumed a lot of beverages and desserts with tamarind. Okay, tamarind pods, case in point. I have no idea what the fuck those are. <laughs> That's my own fault. I need to travel more. I need to make like a travel bar experience, like where I go around the world and just try drinks from around the world. That would be my dream. That is my absolute dream. Now, Ashleen, you get one more perk. Oh, oh, oh. You can make two other mixologists swap fruits. <laughs> this is when you gotta be shady, bitch. This is when you gotta not care about friendships and throw people under the bus. Uh, Suzu and Michael should switch. Ooh. Switch it up. Suzu and Michael made the switch. 
I have a notorious reputation for just liking citrus. It dries up my mouth, it hurts my teeth. You're a bartender or a mixologist who doesn't like citrus. How do you make cocktails? Citrus is an integral part of most cocktails. What the fuck? Oh, I got a problem with this. I got a problem with this. Your cocktails will be judged on appearance, taste, and creativity. But make sure the fruit is the star of your cocktail. Okay, so we're worrying more about fruit or the experience it brings us. Because from what they're saying, I'm gonna focus as a judge, self-appointed, more on if they were able to make the fruit the star of a good cocktail, and also as a secondary benefit, bring me to an experience. This is a plantain, platanos, maduros, amarillos, known in Puerto Rico for its starchy flavor, but also sweet. You can make a really fun rum-based caramelized plantain drink, like some kind of banana rum cocktail with caramel and brown sugar rim. Like, I think that we could really pull this out. Where was that in the judging? Where was that in the explanation of picking out the fruit? I am making plantains. The inspiration for this cocktail is a bodega in the Bronx. When I was a kid, my mom used to give me $5 for snacks after school. And the first thing I do is get a tropical fruit milkshake and some fried plantains as a snack. She's not wrong. As somebody who's been to the Bronx many, many times, those are all things you're able to find there. The challenge she's gonna have is the aesthetics. How are you gonna be able to make it look like it's from a bodega in the Bronx? So I'm thinking a Tokyo-inspired highball. Dry vermouth, some sake. Pink peppercorn and rose hip. That using sake as the base is a little bit of a risk because that spirit might not stand out in your cocktail, especially with these ingredients that they're using. The sake might be overpowered, so when you're drinking the drink, you might might not be able to get any hint of alcohol in the cocktail, which many of you might like. But for people that enjoy a cocktail, you're gonna wanna be able to taste that there's some alcohol in your drink. That's why people come back and try to return it because they think there's no alcohol in this. So using sake as a base for sweet fruits or citrusy fruits, it's gonna mask it so well that you're not gonna be able to fully know that you're drinking an alcohol drink. I got this vision of like an old style noir film feel. This is gonna be sexy, sexy apples. Sexy, sexy apples. I would make it like a Manhattan-based cocktail because the big apple. I would make a fancy apple-themed cocktail like something you would order at like a fancy hotel bar in Manhattan. Where are you taking us today? Where am I going? Um, we're going to my childhood, a special place that I remember somebody who took care of me who had a fig tree herself, so oh. she made fresh fig meat. See that element of nostalgia yeah. right off the bat? Love it. <laughs> I love it, but it's very vague, which isn't a bad thing. For this competition, what she's trying to do right here is make it so, how are you gonna tell me that this doesn't transport you to a place you've never been before? This is a place that's personal to me. So you're not gonna be able to tell me that it doesn't transport you there if you've never been there. I can't wait to see what Lloyd's gonna do with this durian. His success with the durian is going to lie completely on the spirit that he chooses. For that, I would probably, honestly, use like a mezcal like a smoky tequila. Tequila or smoky scotch would go really well with durian. What did I say? Bitch, are you kidding me? I basically gave a combination of those two. I think a smoky tequila would go great. Or something that might be a stretch would be like a rum if I was going for a sweeter cocktail, since it's thick. Michael over here decorated already. Michael has the gooseberry, it's tricky. You know, it's not a flavor that we're all very familiar with. Hello. The fuck is a gooseberry? The comments are gonna make so much fun of me. They do this to me all the time. I will say if he has that much extra time, focusing too much on aesthetics and not on taste is gonna put him at a disadvantage. Because at the end of the day, the flavor palette and the taste of the cocktail matters more than the aesthetic and overall look of the drink. That's a great benefit and a great way to charge more for a cocktail. But at the end of the day, we all want it to taste good more than anything else. I'm attempting to make a really cool ice cube in this glass. Basically, this drink is gonna have a sexy stir drink and then the ice is gonna break and reveal juice and become another drink. So it's two drinks. It's like a fusion of, co that's a great idea. That's a great idea, especially in a flute glass because you don't really wanna fill a flute glass 
with ice because there's not much space in there as it is. So unless you're putting straight alcohol in there, you can't really put a cocktail in it without watering it down. Unless the ice that you're mixing into it will add to the overall experience of the cocktail. So this is a great technique and a great idea. The flavor profile starts to change and then over time you get that integration of the apple juice. Science! This is science! I'm so impressed at the innovation it takes to make some of these cocktails. That is such a great idea for this challenge. Time's up. This is what makes me believe that they don't need that much time to make these cocktails. I don't believe that they're that pressed for time if they're doing the flair bartending. Flair bartending is extra. It's more for experience and entertainment. So all these shots of them shaking things very entertainingly, pouring it at crazy lengths, doing all this lavish shit, that makes me feel like they had a lot of extra time to spare. All right, now we're going into the taste. Obviously, I'm not there to taste these cocktails, so I'm gonna do my best to judge them based on look and theme and whether or not, based on the ingredients and process that they used, if I think it would be good. That is stunning. That's absolutely stunning. Just from looking at it and watching her process, I already know that this cocktail is going to be amazing. I wanted you to feel like you're transported to kind of a noir era metropolis. It looks like something an escort would be drinking at a high-end New York City motel bar. Hotel bar, excuse me, not a motel bar, hotel bar, because escorts know their worth. It was an apple explosion in my mouth and it was boozy, very big apple. I'm a big fan of transformative cocktails. That's why instead of min I'm drunk, sorry, excuse me, let me live. Instead of Metropolitan, she should have just said it was Big Apple themed because that's literally what she's saying. The only critique I would have on this cocktail is that there was too much of the frozen apple juice because the actual cocktail is so minimal. Like I could drink that in one gulp and that I would not like. I had mangoes today. Overall appearance looks great, at least the way they plated it. The actual cocktail kind of looks a little boring. It looks like a basic tiki bar drink compared to the rest. And with how dense the color is, it might be too sweet, but that's just from first glance. I use two different spirits, uh, a mango infused vodka, as well as some cachaca. I wish I had gotten more of the cachaca in your cocktail. It was definitely mango heavy. The problem is if he's using a mango base with a mango rum and then the cachaca, yeah, of course, the cachaca is gonna be like a separate ingredient. But the overall challenge was to make the mango the star. So I don't like this judge all of a sudden being like, I wish I would have gotten more of the cachaca. The point of the challenge wasn't to get the additive ingredient to be the standout star. So what the fuck? So I did mountain tea infused gin and then also some fino share. I will say, that cocktail looks a little boring. The cocktail looks a little boring. Visuals and aesthetics it is kind of lacking compared to the other ones I've seen so far. Capri, I had never had a Korean melon, but I love that you tasted it and you created a Collins style drink, kind of a take on a Ricky, a classic exactly. Ricky. The gin really came through. Okay. Okay, but is the point to get the alcohol through or is the point to get the fruit through? And just doing a fruit flavored Tom Collins is not difficult and very, very easy to do and kind of a cop-out. I would say that this drink isn't really that lavish. Its aesthetics are not that great and it's not that intricate. Just making a flavored Tom Collins, whoop de fucking do Like, that's not hard at all. Michael, Michael, you had gooseberries. Did a punch format cocktail with uh, a mixture of different spirits. What spirit did you use? Gin from Quebec. You were done like really quickly. I was gonna say, he had a lot of extra time. The presentation of the drink wasn't that crazy and innovative. I feel like if he had all that extra time, he could have put that into making the overall presentation look better. And if your fruit is just berries, it's gonna be hard to make sure that that flavor is just standing out and the overall cocktail just doesn't taste like fruit. This was a very juicy cocktail. Bitch, si shut up, sign me up. Remember when you fired me because you said I didn't know what I was doing or talking about? 
You fired me because I couldn't keep my pants on. Valid, valid. We're not here to talk about it. Hey, what fruit did you have? Passion fruit. Passion yeah. fruit. Just, you know, treasure it up a little. No, look at this juice. So I made an updated, revised, elevated version of the porn star. That's a great option, a very safe option. Passion fruit is very safe. Passion fruit to me, I don't really know how to make that stand out. It's just like a sweet fruit. So that should be very easy for them to incorporate in this cocktail. I made a olive oil infused vodka. And then for fun, I took freeze dried passion fruit, a little bit of popping candy and made a rim out of that. I feel like the overall look and presentation of the cocktail is great. I feel like the flavor palettes are all there. I wish there was more of a garnish. Like I love what she did on the rim. I feel like that's fun and innovative and I would greatly enjoy it. I just wish that there was some kind of fun fruit or garnish that's either on the rim of the glass or floating in the cocktail, personally. LP went with the guava. We're going to the Bronx. We're gonna visit a bodega. It's super innovative presentation and like the creativity was off the charts. Huge fan, like that was awesome. What I like is that she made an entire dessert experience. Not only did she make a dessert cocktail, but she paired it with the plantain, which not only transports you to an environment and a place, it adds to the overall cocktail experience. Gold leafed durian. First of all, I think the presentation of this is very fun. It's very Game of Thrones theme. And I love the name of it, the Smelly Boy. I think that's fun. I can't really see the cocktail in that glass. So I can't really be able to tell based on sight whether or not it's balanced. So let's see what they say. What spirit did you use? Uh, sake, nigori sake. So just sake. Uh, and vodka too. Again, I'm gonna say like before, I think the critique that they're gonna have is that the spirits were too light and didn't make an overall impression. That's the risk you run when using sake as a base in fruity cocktails. I think, you know, had you chose a bigger spirit, you know, like a tequila or even scotch, or, you know, a smoky scotch it, yeah. or something like that. A mezcal? I'm saying, bitch, a mezcal. I think that would go great. This just had so many faults from start to finish. Thank you. This is what I'm talking about. He, he gave himself too many hurdles to start with. I know he was trying to prove himself, but why would you give yourself a disadvantage? Like he fully chose a disadvantage to start with. That's his own damn fault. I ended up with plantains. I used a uh, rum with a rapid infuse of orange vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon. I think that sounds amazing. And I think the presentation of this cocktail is amazing. My cocktail's name is the fig tree. Are they gonna say if the other guy's shit was good? Of sherry with the shred figs. Sherry and fig sounds like it would go very, very well together. I will say her presentation is very lacking compared to the other ones. Just like a basic glass with like a, a little bit of shit on the rim. I'm kind of bored. You had an hour and a half. You had an hour and a half to make something that blew my fucking mind. You had fig as a fruit, which you can incumbensate in so much. I'm bored with this cocktail. And on a TV show, on a competition TV show, that is one thing you do not want me to be. I found the rim to be a little bit messy in appearance. I mean, I can taste the fig in the cocktail. The cocktail is like delicious. I love the rustic quality of your presentation. It looks good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I disagree. I think it's boring. I think it's boring and I think she could have done better. Alexa, I found that it was a little bit too acidic. Yeah, okay. I didn't really get a lot of the plantain out of it. Maybe the plantain didn't come through for me. I feel like he continues to do himself a disservice and it's the same critique that I had in my last video when they don't give themselves enough volume to be able to work with ingredients because that cocktail looks amazing. Those ingredients sound like they would all be amazing, but maybe he didn't use enough of the plantain ingredient because he gave himself the amount of space that like a shot has, not like a full cocktail. So when you do yourself that disservice, you're making it that much harder for flavors to come through in the end. What is your drink called? Uh, this is called Hometown Hikari. It means uh, like sparkle in Japanese. And the idea behind the cocktail is really kind of like taking it back to a dive bar in Japan. I mean, get a lot of like um, sake or sochu and um, maybe like a grapefruit soda kind of cocktail. Super simple, super minimalistic. It's very minimalistic in appearance. And I think it's going to be the same in taste. Again, when you're using sake as the base, you're making it very hard for the spirits to come through, especially with 
citrus fruits, it's gonna overpower it way, way, way too much. Unfortunately, your drink was out of balance. I'm ready to be bucked. Tell, tell us about what food you got. Tamarind pods. Wanted to do a biofluorescent drink. The tamarind itself, then the shell, I infused it in rum to give it a little bit of more of a body. I use I use white rum. That looks amazing and that sounds amazing. I think that the, he's gonna do great in this challenge. Then the other rum that was in my drink was uh, just washed with the coconut oil. The oil is gonna bring out overall texture of the cocktail and smell. He's using the right alcohol as a base. The flavor, the appearance, I think this is amazing. Well, I love the mouthfeel of this cocktail. Ah, I suck my dick! Illumination it has an amazing ability to accentuate texture. So I think it works really, really well here. This is something like I would order on like a tropical vacation. I think that's an amazing cocktail. I'm so jealous, I wanna try that so bad. When I call your name, please step forward. Lloyd. You gave yourself a disadvantage. Why would you do that? Raj. I don't fully agree with, I don't think his, I don't, I don't personally think his was the worst, but maybe since I wasn't there to taste it, I'm missing something. That's because your stations are equipped with everything that you need to execute a New York sour, except for bar tools. Ah, oh, come on. What? When I tell you I would excel, when I tell you this is, when I tell you this would be my challenge, bitch. <laughs> I got you a box filled with a bunch of random shit. <laughs> so stupid. That's literally what I do on this YouTube channel. <laughs> you know what you don't have in this scenario? A fucking spoon. So the New York Sour is a classic cocktail. It was created in the late 1800s. And it's essentially a whiskey sour, generally with a little bit of orange juice added. And it has a red wine float. Does it have egg whites or not? How do you know if a, if a whiskey sour has egg whites? I see this happen all the time. I, when I was trained, didn't use egg whites. But I see everybody using egg whites. How do you know when to use egg whites or not? It's not brunch if there's no eggs. So I thought to myself, let's garnish this cocktail with hard boiled eggs. Har garnishing it with hard boiled eggs in a situation like this is gonna be nothing but a waste of fucking time. <laughs> Raj is straining his cocktail with a pasta strainer. Straining the cocktail with a pasta strainer is fine. It's fine. The ingredients you're using aren't so fine that you can't do that. The, the, all these things are not as hard as you're making it seem like it is. Like I would be so fine in this in this challenge. A deli container and a mason jar. That is not an easy way to mix a drink. Yes, it is. Yes, it absolutely is fine. I, in the beginning of my channel, used to shake my cocktails in a workout shaker. Is there a slight difference? Yes. But at the end, you're literally just trying to combine all the flavors. So in, in a situation like this, it's fine. Like a mason jar? That's fine. There's literally mason jar shakers. Lord's take on a New York sour. The egg is completely a waste of time. The sour looks fine, but I just, I can't get over the egg. I added some mule wine instead of just the wine. That's it. Christmas morning at Grandma's. The mulled wine is definitely a great additive. It's gonna add more flavor to the cocktail overall. All right, now let's see what Raj came up with. I wanted to do a rendition of a New York sour. I will say that Raj's looks better to me personally. The presentation and the overall aesthetic of the cocktail looks more pleasing. Let's talk about Lloyd's. Everything was there, all the ingredients were there. The egg, was it too much? Yes, the egg was too much. Lloyd gets stuck on his ideas and he doesn't know how to edit himself. I'm free to be booked. I'm free, Lindsay, you can come back. Let him know, let him know, girl. You can make decisions on reality TV that are wrong. Can you stand up straight, please, for the love of God? Even though he didn't achieve that really nice, you know, defined line of the float on top, it still was a really great use of flavor. Yeah. Yeah, he messed up on the float on top. Like there was no separation in color and flavor. Which is why I tend to be leaning more towards Raj's just based on appearance. If he hadn't been trying to boil us breakfast <laughs> eggs, he could have really focused on the drink. That's what I'm saying, he wasted his time. This dude does nothing but put himself at a constant disadvantage. I was excited when I saw him working with, you know, the fresh herbs. He's got the beautiful fresh rosemary on there. So I was like, oh cool, I'm gonna get some beautiful aromatics and some, you know, complexity happening. And then I took a sip. It's lacking that body and structure that you want in a properly balanced 
cocktail. It was too tart, not enough sugar. But you want to be tasting your cocktail as you're building to make sure that the cocktail he's presenting to us is beautifully balanced. This might literally be a classic case of everything I've been saying this entire episode, which is just because something looks better doesn't mean that it tastes better. Taking into consideration everything we've seen from you both, the mixologist staying in this competition is Lloyd. Oh my God. I'm sorry, Raj. That means you will not be the ultimate drink master. Bitch, what did I say? Oh, okay, so first of all, I'm wrong. First of all, I was wrong. I thought Raj was gonna take it because I thought that they were gonna care more about the look and I thought the look was gonna mean that it tasted better. But I literally proved myself wrong. That just because something looks better doesn't mean that it is better. And since I'm not there to taste it, of course I'm actually wrong. This is bittersweet, like his fucking cocktail. In the comments down below, let me know what you think about these cocktails. And if you would like to see me react to more episodes from this series. Thank you to everybody over on Patreon for helping to support this channel, especially the regulars and barflies. You get content with no ads, content I can't post anywhere else, and workout diaries that I've been posting recently. And Lindsay, move out of the way because I gotta give a special shout out to this person over on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out at the end of my videos, be sure to retweet them when they come out. If that's all, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is MikeMGTV and you are fucking welcome.